Okay, so we're here looking down on um, some of the tidal creeks in the Ash Avenue restoration. This is a nice example of um, some of the types of variation we can get um, in terms of natural tidal connections. Now, um, our, our historic, well-functioning, undisturbed salt marshes would have a vast array of um, tidal creeks, different thicknesses, different um, meandering levels of meandering, etc. And you can see a little bit of that flavor here. So we have some tidal creeks where essentially the vegetation is right up to the, the edge of the main tidal creek channel. In other cases, we have more of an extensive mud flat, devegetated area um, outside of the quote unquote main channel. And so as we look at the top of the image here, we see that we have um, a, a sort of little bit of flow or, or or when the tidal elevation is just a little bit higher um, the water will always be in there as it goes higher and higher it'll obviously flood more and more areas so one of the key communities that we have in our salt marshes uh, is the primary producers is the the, the are the algal films um, the diet layers of diatoms etc that are really important foragers for things like our snails like serothidia and a lot of our um, uh, grazing community. And so uh, areas that have extensive tidal flats are going to have extensive area where those types of um, organisms, those single-celled um, algae can can grow and, and, and cover and, and, and in turn become places that other critters can forage. In addition to those guys foraging there, a lot of birds need mud flats and these types of areas to um, hunt for food for worms and invertebrates in fauna, critters living in the sediment, etc. So a real healthy marsh will have a mix of these. We'll have some areas of extensive mud flats around, say, their, their tidal channels, other areas where it's really tied in with the vegetation. One of the things I didn't fully understand um, when I first started working on um, in salt marshes, and if we just sort of spin around a little bit and look, just sort of get a sense of the, the overall area. Um, as we look here, as, as we keep looking this away and look up um, and... and uh, start looking there you go okay so uh i thought that the water would flood from the ocean and come on in and and start at the ocean area and then come on up and and flood slowly towards the back actually in healthy marshes the reverse is going to happen they're going to flood in the back oftentimes first that's because these tidal channels um are key aspects of channeling the water and there will be some type of natural levying on the sides of these channels. So um, the, the lowest point you can imagine where you're filling your bathtub with water, the port where the water first comes out is oftentimes the back of the channel. So um, a key part of healthy, um, uh, the architecture of healthy salt marshes and healthy tidal streams is also the elevations, not just, not just how they're carved into the, to the area, to the landscape, but what their overall elevation is, the Z, uh, throughout the salt marsh. And, and we'd like to see that in a really mature uh, system.